welcome back to part 14 of how to create an endless runner using Unity and C Sharp. Uh, today we're going to be going over some pickups, so some power ups. Um, basically, we're going to add coin magnet in this episode. So we're going to create the sprite, and whenever we interact with the sprite, we will make it so all the coins are within a certain distance to the player will move towards the player, so the player doesn't have to actively collect them. Um, so we'll get started. Um, I suppose we'll just start off with the sprite. So again, we'll go to Piscal and we'll start working on our sprite. Um, I'm going to start the silhouette just off in black just to get the shape. I don't care about the positioning, I'll fix all that up later. And I just want it to look like a magnet. So go for something magnety. Maybe I'll extend this side out a bit. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to center it and paint it. Um, I was thinking of doing blue down here on the bottoms, but because we have a blue background, I'm going to use gray. So I'll just add some grey, and then we'll just save that out. When it lets me. Don't tell me my internet's growing up. No, cool. Um, so once you have that, just go to wherever you have it downloading to. Computer's being really slow. It's Photoshop. Okay, so just go to wherever you have it downloading to and go to Unity and drag it into your scene, into your texture zone. And then we just want to come to the texture and set it up like we did for the others. So we change its size to 240, change its filter mode to point, hit apply. And then we want to drag it in and change our scale to 7.5 and have a look at it. Um, the grey is still a little bit like dark and blends into the blue a bit too much, but we'll keep it like that for now. So now that we have that, we'll give it a tag, and our tag is just going to be a new tag, and it's just going to be called Magnet. So it's Magnet, press Enter. We come back to our magnet, and we'll just rename it, and change its tag to the one we just created, and then we can start with some scripting, now that we have our actual magnet object. Um, so to do that, we just want to come to Visual Studio, and go into our coin script, because that's where we're going to do all of this scripting, because it's to do with our coins. And we're going to want to just start off by, um, I guess we'll just start by pulling our object. So we can just copy the line where we were um, setting our player object to P, so that we could use P in our script um, to find the player. So instead of P, we're going to change it to M for magnet. And then we're just going to change this over the magnet. And then cool. Now we have an M, which is a game object, which is equal to our magnet. So um, we might end up having more than one magnet in our scene, but we'll deal with that later by making it so that we can't maybe. Um, but that'll be in a separate episode. So that's good for now. So we'll keep it at that. And then we'll add some variables quickly. We'll just add a new public variable, which is just going to be our coin magnet. So we'll just call it coin mag. And it's a game object. I mean, it's a ball. So, so we're just going to want it to be equal to false, saying a ball is either equal to true or false. And then we need just one other, which will be a public float. Not a ping. Public 
float and this is going to be our timer and we're going to be using this to check how long our coin magnet has been running for so to begin with it's just going to be equal to zero and then we can start with the actual scripting well the actual body of the script um, so to begin with I think we'll just make it so the coin magnet is either on or off and do that when the player uh, collides with the coin magnet and then we'll actually start doing what the coin magnet does after that so to begin with we just want to come under our 4h and just add an if statement which is going to be if m um, apostrophe isn't I mean equals I'll explain this in my sec so. so all this says is if m isn't equal to null null being uh, nothing so if m is something and isn't nothing so if m is in the scene do what is ever inside of these brackets and down here we are just going to do a distance check so we'll just grab it from up here paste it down here but instead of being between the coin it's going to between uh, be between the magnet and the player and that distance should be fine so we'll just end that off wait it's an if statement so we need brackets I mean sorry uh, we'll just clean this up quickly um, so yeah now all that we have is if we have a magnet in our scene we are checking how far the magnet is from our player and if it is less than this we'll do whatever um, whatever is inside of here so inside of here, we just want to destroy our magnet. Seeing we've collided with it, we don't need the um, object in the scene anymore. So destroy game object. Dot find um, find with tag I mean. and then we just want to give it its tag, which is going to be magnet. So that's our first line. So now whenever our player collides with a magnet, it should just disappear. So we'll just test that quickly. We'll save this and come over to Unity. Um, we might want to change the order and layer on our magnet once it's loaded. Not to 30, but to 3. And now if we press play, collide with the magnet, it deletes. Cool. So now that we have that, um, I'm just going to mute the audio for this video. You can do that just by clicking the audio in the game window. Um, we can come back into here and start doing a little bit more. So we don't just want to delete it, we want to set coin magnet to true so that whatever we do when our coin magnet is true can happen. So to do that we want another if statement which would just be if our coin mag is equal to false so we're just checking if our coin magnet isn't already active um, and if it isn't we're just going to set it to true cool so now if we save that and come back over we come to the uh, game object which has the coin script um, when we press play you'll see this box will get ticked now whenever we collide with the magnet. Cool. So now that we have that, we can actually just start using this to start triggering our script. So um, we don't want it to run forever, so we'll quickly put that on a timer. So to do the timer, we just want to add another thing up the top here, which is just going to be if our whoops, coin magnet is equal to true, then we'll start running our timer. So just timer um, plus equals one, and then we just want to times it by time dot delta time, just so that. Um, the time is being calculated at the same speed on every computer, like we've gone through in earlier videos. 
but so now that we have our time going up, we just want to say uh, we have our time going up if our coin magnet is active. We just want to say in here that um, if our timer equals more than 10, um, then we just want to set our coin magnet to be false. And we'll set our timer back to zero, so the next time our coin magnet um, gets activated, the timer isn't 10, and it doesn't just get turned off straight away again. So now that we have our timer in, we can come back into the game, wait for it to load, and now whenever we collide with our magnet, this will get ticked, and our timer will start going up. And then once it gets to 10, it will... Um, untick this and reset this to zero. Hopefully. So let's press play. We get that. It starts going up. Gets to 10 and it goes to zero and then clicks. Cool. So now that we have that, we'll do our actual bit of coin magnet. So this is going to be in our for each because we need to do it for every single coin. So we're just going to add an if statement under our other one in the for each, which is going to be if our coin magnet is equal to true, because we only want to do this when the coin magnet is true. Um, and then we need another distance check. So we'll just copy this one. And this distance check is going to be between the item, because if you remember, ah, uh, not the item, the coin, because up here we have our game object coin, which is, there is one of these for every single coin that's in the scene, because in here that's where we store every single coin that's in the scene. So down here we're checking for each coin in the scene, how far is it from our player's position, and if it is that far, then do this. Um, that distance should be terrible for this <laughs> because we want this to be um, obviously not really, really close to the player. We want it to be kind of far away from the player so the coin magnet starts being active on coins um, before we get really close so that we start seeing them being dragged towards us. Um, and yeah, it'll just look a lot nicer and make it a bit more practical. So this number here is the actual number that changes the value of how far away the coins need to be before they'll start being dragged towards you. It'd be a better way just to say all that. Um, so I'll just clean this up quickly. And then down here, we just want to get our coin. And then we just want to transform it. I mean, we want to get its transform. No, we do want to transform it first. Transform dot translate, and we want to do this by getting. Well, we need to get the like direction from the like, between the coin and the player. So whatever direction the player is from the coin, um, and we can do this just by minusing the coin's position from the player's position and then normalizing it which will just change it into a like um, normal number I'm pretty sure, I can't really remember um, and then we will have our direction to our player which we can use to move our coin by <laughs> which will make him move towards our player um, yeah I'll explain it a little bit in a second and it'll make more sense so yeah we just want to get our p dot transform and then we want to get its position, and we just want to minus that by our coins. So our coin dot transform dot position, and then, like I said, we just want to dot normalize. Is that the right syntax? Yep. Hmm, why is it doing that? Right, I'll just finish it off that might look. So times our speed 
and then times by time but delta time and we want it to be in the world space so we just do that by running space dot world and then we need our closing bracket and that would be our problem, our brackets so we are missing a bracket from up here is that all it was? Uh, that's meant to be a dot, I always do that because I have a different keyboard now and it, yeah, it's just screwing with me yeah, cool. So um, now all this says is for our coin object, we want to transform dot translate it. So we want to move it, and we want to move it in the direction which is the direction which we're calculating here, which is the direction uh, the direction between the coin and the player. And we want to move it at this speed, and we want to move it at a fixed time and in the world space. Cool. So if we just save that, we come back into our game. Waiting. Now, if we press play, when we get our coin magnet, we have a coin magnet. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit janky at the moment. Um, that's because we're moving the coins towards our player, and all of our player movements happening in the fixed update, basically. So, if we just change this over to a fixed update. And save that um, and then come back and do our game it should be running a little bit smoother or notably smoother okay so just press play we get this and now we have a coin magnet and so whenever the coin magnet gets to 10, it will run out, which is just about to happen. And then you have to collect the coins physically again. Cool. Um, so I think that will be just about it for this episode. Um, next time we'll go further into the power-ups and making it so they're spawned randomly in the episode. Uh, I mean, randomly throughout the game, that is. And we'll probably add another power up and yeah stuff like that um, we're getting kinda close to having a lot of the core in this game like done we still need to add a store and stuff like that but yeah it's been coming along pretty well so I hope you enjoyed this episode um, sorry if I didn't explain everything just perfectly I can go over the script again just quickly um, so yeah we just have our coin magnet and with that we just check if there is a coin magnet and if there is one we check the distance between it and our player and if the distance is um, basically touching then we want to delete the object which was our coin object and I mean our, we want to delete the object which was our coin magnet and then we want to set coin magnet to true and then when coin magnet is true we start counting down and once we get to 10 we set coin magnet to false and we set our timer back to zero so that next time we turn it to true we can start counting up to 10 again and while all of this is happening and it's set to true we're also checking um, the distance between every single coin in the scene and we're checking how far away it is from the player and if it's less than five then we're just moving it that being the coin towards the player and yeah that's basically the whole script so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day. Where's the stop?